You, yes, that's the thing, is you look at it a thousand times and when you start drawing it, all of a sudden you see it. See, this is the composite flower, so-called, because it's a composite of this kind of flower, this being a single flower. And inside here, each one of these little guys is a different shaped flower with its own reproductive parts. Isn't that fun? But basically, it's taught like a simple language, just like you would teach writing. You, you learn the alphabet first. I mean, we don't sing the songs, but it's pretty much you learn the very basics. You learn about pencils, how to hold them. You learn about papers, the different kinds of papers. And then we talk about the gray scale. Everybody knows what's black and what's white and what's gray. And so they learn to articulate that. And then we build to applying that to sort of abstract geometric objects like square boxes and cones, etc. And then we graduate to real things, and it's very graspable. Well, underneath every beautiful botanical painting is an absolutely perfect black and white rendering. If you take a gorgeous botanical painting off the wall and put it on his black and white scanner, you'll see just as perfect a painting, but without the color. So they have, before they start color, they have to understand how form looks in black and white. And this is the perfect way to do that. It's very simple, very direct, and they get very good at it before they get into color and get sort of overwhelmed with issues. Uh, you know, lengths of things, I believe. I guess I went, when I went to college, I did a lot of drawing, and um, that was late 60s, so it was uh, before computers, and most of my waking hours I'm in front of a computer now. <laughs> so everything I do is on a computer, and I just said, I want to get back to pencil. I just wanted to improve my skills. It's been quite a few years since I. Uh, did drawing uh, with pencil and paper. It's teaching how to look at things and when you look at things correctly then you can duplicate them more easily but a lot of it is just sitting there and looking at it. So what is, what is it about plants in general that draws you to want to put them down on paper? Because they're they're so complex and yet they're so ordered. Everything has a, you know, a function and they're so varied, you could never, you, know, you could paint everyone and never come to the end of possibilities. And they all have such little characteristics that you don't see unless you actually look at them. And what can you say to somebody who would really love, knows they really love to be able to paint flowers? Yes, you can. Okay, great. <laughs> Oh, you can do it. It really takes practice. You can do it. It might take some time, it's going to take some effort, but with it's a skill. As much as a gift, it is a skill that can be learned. We work on the leaf. John Ruskin said, if you can paint a leaf, you can paint the world. For me, the reward is to be able to translate on, onto piece of paper, a, a beautiful image of what I'm looking at, uh, accurate and uh, recognized by others, and uh, it's knowing what that flower looks like or that leaf looks like from all directions.